Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today we have a case study, a 2015 Jeep Wrangler with a 3.6 liter and a check engine light on. So I already scanned the code, and it's a P0456. It is a small EVAP leak. Now, I approach all EVAP leaks and a lot of EVAP faults in the same way, and I test it in this same order. Uh, different manufacturers, I do things a little bit different based on the manufacturer and what's common to fail. Like a GM is, you know, it's common for the purge valve, but it's also common for the vent solenoid. So I kind of do things a little bit different. But given that this is a Jeep, I show you how I test this. Now, before we get into it, hit the like button, hit subscribe button, and hit the bell you get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. All right, so when I first hook up to a vehicle, the most important thing with EVAP is you need to understand what you have the capabilities of doing. Can you command the purge valve? Can you command the vent solenoid? But here is the first thing, and I didn't do it on this because this vehicle didn't allow it. So if the vehicle is capable of running an EVAP test, then you want to do that EVAP test. Here's why. If you run the EVAP test and the computer says that it passes and there's no problem, well, guess what? Nothing's acting up right now. There's no leak. All the solenoids are working and everything is sealing like it's supposed to. Now, let's say you run it and it's got a, a, a leak. Okay, cool. Well, now we have some go on. So, you got to understand that that's the first test that you do. On this specific Jeep Wrangler, it did not allow me to run a small EVAP leak test. It was allowing me to do a medium test, a medium leak and a large leak. So obviously I didn't run the test. So I'm going to approach this the same way I do in all of these. So let's go check it out. Let me show you how I do this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start this thing up. All right. Now we're going to come around here. And this is what I do on step one of any EVAP system. I always test this, it's the easiest test to do. So in this one, we're gonna to go to system tests. Uh, most of the time, functional tests on Chrysler's is key on, engine off. Uh, system tests are with it running. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here, and we're gonna go, oh, there it was right there, we're gonna to go to purge vapors, okay? This is going to allow us to operate the purge valve and, uh, and block the purge valve. All right. So we're gonna go up there, all right? So flow block, so the whatever's, whatever's in black is what you're gonna do. So what you do is you find your purge valve, and on this case, it's here on the passenger fender. We're not gonna to touch the connector, we're not gonna to touch anything. So we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna leave the intake side, on this one, the intake side of the purge valve connected. All right, that comes around here. And that is connected. And now what we did was now we have the canister side of the purge valve disconnected. So the best way to do this is with gloves on. So what you're gonna do is and you're gonna use your fingers because hearing it, it's not gonna it's not gonna do justice. So we're gonna flow it and we're gonna block it. And now the best way to do this is with your finger over it. Because as you can see right now. We are in block. And you can see. So the purge valve is closed. And you can see with a glove, it's easier. If it had a very small leak, it would be easier to see with a glove. This one actually is leaking pretty good. But if it had the slightest, slightest little leak of vacuum, you may not feel it with your fingertip. It's very hard to feel. So a glove is the easiest way. Now, if you don't have access to a scan tool, another way that you can do it is disconnect the electrical connector. So a, port, a purge valve is normally closed, but the problem that you run into is that sometimes when it's sitting here at idle, some strategies will have the purge valve operating. And so therefore, if you sit here and you have this line off and you don't have access to a scan tool, 
you might think that it's not that it's working that it's not that it's not supposed to be working but it actually is so the easiest way to do it is to disconnect the electrical connector and that you, that way you know the computer is not turning the purge valve on so that's how we tested this and this is how I test all purge valves as long as I can get to them you saw how easy that was all right so now we know the purge valve is bad we're going to go ahead and test the evap system to make sure it's sealed okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and the scan tool does not give us the option to close the back door so what we're going to do is the purge valve is right here we're going to disconnect the line that goes from the purge valve to the canister okay and so how are we going to test that getting in there and getting a good seal is we're gonna go right here. I just got this set right here, this red line detection's easy connect set. It comes with multiple uh, T's and everything else. So what I'm gonna do is I got this guy right here. I'll show you how simple it is. On these newer cars where all these fittings are like this, we're just gonna take this. We're just gonna click it in. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our speed smoke machine adapter right here. And we're going to plug it in. Let me hold on to this so I can get a good seal. All right, now we got that plugged in. All right, so the speed smoke machine doesn't need an air, it doesn't need an air hose. So we've got our battery hooked up. And we've come over here. We got everything hooked up. All right, so now what we're going to do, we come over here. Normally you would go in with the scan tool and command the back door closed, but on this one you can't. So what we did was we just disconnected the, uh, the line that goes, the vent that goes to the, I forgot what it's called, ESIM module on the canister, electronic system. I forgot what it's called, I'll look it up. I can't remember, it's some weird name. But anyway, so we just capped off that line right there, that port. So now the back door is closed. Ugh. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna flip this to EVAP. Always double check to make sure your EVAP light is on because you don't wanna put 17 pounds of air to a EVAP system. And now we're gonna hit vapor test. Now what we're looking for is this ball to drop. Now this is the most important part of EVAP that I like, that, that I think is the most important when it comes to diagnostics, is watching the ball drop. You notice how it drops and it comes just like this and it bounces. That is super important to watch. It'll tell you how sealed your EVAP system is and, uh, and how closely sealed it is. So. So we are, I already know this one doesn't have a leak. I'm just showing you that the ball is going to drop. So it's gonna drop all the way down to there. You can see the bottom right before it starts to taper. It's gonna come down and sometimes it'll do like a quick little bounce and it'll settle. But you can see. And we have no leak. All right, now, so with using this speed, speed smoke machine, just like any smoke machine, always double check to make sure you have oil before you start. So for this one, it's super simple. All you do is take this knob off and you got your oil here. And you open it up like that and then you pour it right in. Super easy, make sure you have smoke. All right, so now you can see that the ball is at the bottom. All right. So that's how super simple this is. That's why I like this machine right here. No air hose, no nothing. Just straight up this thing and the battery and there we go. And then don't forget to take your cap off of your ESIM valve. All right. All right, so as you saw there, the purge valve was the fault. Now, 
you can do you can test purge valves in other ways like if there's you know uh in some some vehicles in between the purge valve and the canister there is an evap service port so if you have the adapters i have the adapters for that but this vehicle didn't have that and this one was just it's easier to test it with vacuum in my opinion because all i'm testing is the purge valve and it doesn't take very long you want to test that purge valve about 20 times now this is I mean, you're going to do it for all manufacturers. You're going to test it about 20 times. And and a lot of times, if you have a bad purge valve, it'll fail within those 20 times. Sometimes you start it up and you pull the line off and it's just full on stuck open. GMs, that's common on GMs to happen, uh, where the purge valves are right on top of the intake. Um, so that's the first thing that you do. Now, one thing you should never do and I used this, this used to be the first step in EVAP diagnostics that I did was I would take off the fuel cap and I would inspect it. Well, you don't want to do that because if the fuel cap was the leak, if it wasn't installed properly, I actually just recently uh, had an Instagram story showing a, a Lincoln Town Car that was in for an EVAP leak. And sure enough, I smoke tested and it was just pouring out of the fuel cap because the fuel cap wasn't on all the way. So... You don't want to touch the fuel cap. So test that purge valve, make sure it works, make sure it's sealing. And like I said, a vacuum, uh, you putting your finger over the, over the port is the easiest way. You just need to make sure it's not being commanded on. If it's being commanded on, it's not a bad purge valve, it's doing what it's supposed to. The next thing is if you have the ability to test the vent solenoid. Uh, like what I did on this, after I, after I tested the purge valve, Smoke tested the intake system. All right, now I couldn't command the, the vent solenoid because this vehicle didn't allow it. Uh, this had that ESIM module uh, on the tank, I mean on the canister, but like GMs and you know other manufacturers, they have a vent solenoid. You really, ideally you wanna go in through the scan tool and you wanna command the vent solenoid closed because you're checking multiple things. You're checking the computer's command to the vent solenoid you're checking the wiring, and you're checking the, the solenoid itself. Is it capable of operating, and is it capable of closing and sealing the system? Now, if you close the vent solenoid, and you still have smoke coming out of the back, then put a cap over it. Smoke test it. Do you see smoke? Did your ball drop? If your ball drops, your vent solenoid is bad. Uh, so, But you want to test it computer way first if you can. Bidirectional is always the best. Um, but sometimes we don't have that option. So this has been the way I approach uh, a diagnostic on this specific Jeep and the way I approach most EVAP codes. So I hope you learned something. I hope you take something. And hey, if you have any comments about how you test EVAP and, you know, little tips that, you know, might help me. Hey, I'm all for it. Hit me up. Let me know. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Also check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for my daily life as a mechanic. Show you all kinds of cool stuff. Show you tools. Show you stuff you like. Stuff, show you stuff you don't like or that you shouldn't like, that you shouldn't buy. Uh, you know, things I've bought that I tried and they just suck. So thanks for watching. Also check out my merchandise store where you can get yourself a t-shirt or a coffee cup and support the channel. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you next time.